Mexican and U.S. authorities said on Monday that they were searching for four Americans who were kidnapped in northern Mexico after being shot at by gunmen and thrown into the back of a pickup truck shortly after crossing the southern border. The U.S. Embassy in Mexico said the four unidentified Americans, three men and one woman, were in a white minivan with North Carolina license plates when they entered Matamoros on Friday, a city just over the border from Brownsville, Texas. Sí, pero ya se está. Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador said the Public Security Ministry was working with the FBI to locate the missing Americans. Que la información que tenemos According to the information we have, the U.S. citizens crossed the border to shop for medication in Mexico. There was a confrontation between groups and they were detained. The White House said it was closely following the situation. These sorts of attacks are unacceptable. Our thoughts are with the families of these individuals and we stand ready to provide all appropriate consular assistance. U.S. law enforcement is in touch with Mexican law enforcement. The Departments of State and Homeland Security are also coordinating with Mexican authorities and we will continue to coordinate uh, with Mexico and push them for, uh, to bring those responsible to justice. The U.S. State Department has advised Americans not to travel to Matamoros, in part due to the threat of kidnapping. The FBI is offering a $50,000 reward for the return of the four Americans and the arrest of those involved. The surveillance camera footage shows police officers in Georgia trying to secure a chain link fence as what appear to be fireworks explode around them. Across the roadway, dozens of masked protesters hurled rocks and pyrotechnics toward the police. This was the scene Sunday night in a forested area outside Atlanta, which marked the most violent showdown yet between environmental activists and law enforcement over the construction of a police training facility. Protesters set fire to equipment. Police said they'd made 35 arrests. Atlanta Police Chief Darren Schierbaum. You attack law enforcement officers, you damage equipment, you are breaking through the law. This was a very violent attack in the emergency, very violent attack. This wasn't about a public safety training center, this was about anarchy, and this was about the attempt to destabilize. The site of the planned Atlanta Public Safety Training Center, derisively called Cop City by opponents, has been the scene of escalating confrontations both in the woods and in the city. Demonstrators oppose both the increasing militarization of police and the building of the site in a forest that its defenders call, quote, the lungs of Atlanta. Demonstrations ramped up in January after police killed an environmental activist who went by the name Tortuguita during a raid to clear the construction site. Their name and face became a symbol of the resistance. Protesters that month marched in Atlanta and some attacked buildings, set fire to a police car, and were arrested. Reuters photographer Alyssa Pointer has been covering the Cop City demonstrations. She was at a nonviolent gathering on Saturday where she saw the issue unite environmental activists with those calling for police reform. There is a young man from the Dakotas who spoke and he was from a Native American tribe, and he talked about the importance of protecting the land. And I see people who talk about, we want to um, have justice for Rayshard Brooks, the young man that was shot and killed by police in Atlanta a couple days after the George Floyd protest started in 2020. They talked about the um, Tortuguita, the young man that was shot and killed by police who was in occupying the forest at that time. I do believe these two groups are wanting to come together to show solidarity. Sunday's events began with a music festival that was part of a week of demonstrations against the construction. But police said events turned violent when a group of activists they called, quote, agitators, changed into black clothing, breached the site, and launched bricks, rocks, Molotov cocktails, and fireworks at officers. From the U.S. government is making flying cheaper for one group of travelers, families. The U.S. Department of Transportation said Monday, American, Alaska, and Frontier Airlines have agreed to commit in writing to eliminate fees they charge families to sit next to each other if the seats are available when buying the tickets. The move comes after President Joe Biden launched an effort to crack down on what the White House calls junk fees, which he discussed in his State of the Union address last month. We'll prohibit airlines from charging $50 round trip for family just to be able to sit together. Baggage fees are bad enough. Airlines can't treat your child like a piece of baggage. Americans are tired of being. We're tired of being played for suckers. 
The Department of Transportation has unveiled a new government dashboard highlighting airline commitments. To receive a green check, airlines must guarantee parents can sit next to children age 13 and younger without paying fees. They also must include that guarantee as part of customer service plans, which means they are subject to government enforcement if they don't comply. South Korean companies will compensate people forced to work under Japan's 1910 to 1945 occupation, the country said on Monday. It's part of an effort to end a dispute that's undercut US-led efforts to present a unified front against the rising power of China and North Korea's expanding nuclear arsenal. Here's South Korea's Foreign Minister Park Jin. Uh, I hope this solution can become a window of opportunity in history for South Korea and Japan to overcome hostility and conflict, and I think this is the last opportunity. Under the plan, South Korea would pay former forced laborers through an existing public foundation funded by private sector companies. The proposal was welcomed by Tokyo, but faced immediate backlash from some victims and South Korea's main opposition party. They've accused the government of yielding to Japan. About a dozen protesters demonstrated outside as Park made the announcement. Ju Jae-jun is one of them. The apology and compensation from the South Korean government and Japanese companies is shameful and hastily negotiated. It don't reflect any victim's opinion. So it's invalid, and we're saying that we as citizens will protest against it. Disagreements over labor and the women forced into Japanese military brothels have plagued ties between the two U.S. allies for years. But South Korean President Yoon suk Yeol has made a push to repair the relationship. Park said that South Korea and Japan need to, quote, end the vicious cycle for the national interest for the people. Japanese companies will not be expected to make any payments under the plan, but Japan's foreign ministers said they would not be blocked from donating if they want to. US President Joe Biden, whose administration has pressed its two allies to reconcile, has hailed the announcement as groundbreaking. Authorities in the Philippines believe they've located the wreck of the oil tanker that sank off its coast last week, creating an oil spill, and like so many similar accidents before it, left local communities in fear of how much damage is going to be done to the environment and their own livelihoods before it's over. This is the province of Oriental Mindoro. In the sky, you can see the accumulating oil slick on its beaches, the dark patches in the sea and sand. The sunken ship is thought to be 1,200 feet below sea level and was carrying 211,000 gallons of oil when it went down. It's not yet known how much oil has escaped. Florante <inaudible> Favreau is a fisherman. The government has halted fishing operations, and now he says he's afraid he won't be able to afford to feed his children. He also said pollution has given him headaches and pain in his nose. <inaudible> Philip Servancia is another fisherman nearby. He says that the people are using buckets and sacks to pick up the little oil they can. It's still not clear what caused the tanker, called the MT Princess Empress, to sink. Although the Coast Guard has said it suffered engine trouble in rough seas, all 20 crew members were rescued before it went down. The local governor has promised to seek compensation for the disaster. About 89,000 acres of coral reef mangroves and seagrass are potentially affected. Um.